Hello guys, welcome again to my book club where we summarize books for you to help you grow and learn and develop in your life. So the book we have today is called Built Not Born, a self-made billionaire's no-nonsense guide for entrepreneurs. So you know what this book is about. So about entrepreneurship and leadership, people who are leaders and want to make a difference in others lives okay by tom golisano okay so we're gonna get the best out of this book and the you know big ideas of this book all right so big idea number one starting and running a business is a hard and often confusing process but you can get help so if you're currently running your own business or planning on doing so chances are you have had someone tell you not to do it People are scared of venturing into entrepreneurship because of the risks associated with it. And because they love you, they will try to stop you from going down that path. However, there is nothing in life that doesn't involve risk. Even the jobs that they seem to be advocating for are no longer guaranteed. You may get a high paying job with a good organization today and end up losing your job tomorrow when the company goes through tough times. Job security is gradually becoming a myth in this generation. Point is, both starting a business and working for someone are risky, so your decision shouldn't be based on the risk factor alone. So, the decision to start a business or corporate career should be based on the kind of life you want to design for your future self. So put that in your mind. It's a really big decision. Base your decisions on fundamentals like lifestyle freedom and income family goals. It's very clear that business owners are more in control of their time and income than their employee counterparts. But of course, there is the risk that your business may never see the light of the day. And so your income and lifestyle goals will be dashed. The focus here is to equip you with the right information to run a successful organization. It's suitable for both aspiring and established business owners alike. So you'll learn that the best business ideas often kick against existing norms. See the most important thing you should do before starting a business and it's not what you think. Gain advice on how to handle buyer signals and maximize sales as well as many more insights to help you make the most of business opportunities. So I recommend you keep watching till the end and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to get more books in the future. So number two, for clarity, map out your business from the onset. So you will have many struggles if you go into business without proper research and planning. And experienced entrepreneurs with no prior business background usually fall victim of improper planning and that explains why most businesses fail within the first two years. If you pay attention to proper planning, you will save yourself a lot of trouble. Entrepreneurship is hard work in itself. You don't want to complicate it further by going in blindly. Before starting a business, understand your product or service and determine if there is enough market to make your business run successfully. Let's imagine you're starting a baby food retail store. You know that baby food doesn't cost much, so your profit will be low. This simply means you will need quite a number of customers in order to be profitable. If your product costs $80, average with a gross margin of 40%, it means that your gross profit is $32 per sale. For such a small business, the average annual overhead cost, utilities, rent, employee and owner salary, etc. is usually around the $100,000 to $120,000 range. Dividing the overhead cost of $120K by the gross profit gives three thousand seven fifty items which literally means the business has to make three thousand seven hundred and fifty sales in a year to take care of the overhead cost if the business runs for five days a week for 52 weeks that's 260 working days you will need almost 15 sales a day to meet your annual target of course there are days for rush sales particularly during holiday seasons but 15 items a day is the average 
The next thing you should ask yourself is, will the location of this business be able to bring in this number of sales a day? And what realistic marketing strategy do I need to make it work? You may not be running a retail baby food store, but the same principle applies it to all businesses and all industries. This calculation is something you can do on a one-page document, and it's not only useful for making your own decisions. Prospective investors or lenders will need to see something like this to verify that your business is worth their money. Big idea number three, buying the right business involves a procedure. So there are far too many advantages to purchasing a business as a gainist, starting it from scratch. If you have the money and want to save time, then you might want to consider buying one. However, you will need to put certain things into consideration before making your payment so as to avoid losses. First on the list, is to determine why the person wants to sell their business. There is always a reason. Don't assume there is none. It might be that they want to retire and can't find a family member to run the business. They need money for something very urgent. The business is failing or some different reason. Do your research. Do your research and you will find out why. If the reason for selling is satisfactory, you could go ahead and negotiate terms and price. So when buying a business that has inventory, don't forget to check the market value of their existing stock. This is a very important point. Another factor you want to look into is the impact technology might have on the business in the nearest future. Technology is changing more rapidly than many of us can catch up with. What's new today will almost certainly become absolute, obsolete tomorrow. AI, robotics, and the Internet of Things, IoT, are changing the way we work. So you need to consider if the business will require technological adjustments in the next few years. Your findings from this will affect how you negotiate. Among the top benefits of buying an existing business is that you won't have to struggle to establish a customer base or nor start worrying about finding capable employees. However, after the purchase, you need to find out how many workers are wanting to continue working with you. Do this very quickly. If not, you may encounter problems in the future. Just imagine what will happen to sales if the top three salespeople in the organization decide to resign due to a change in leadership. But if you knew beforehand you would have stored it out by giving them incentives but to stay or by hiring a new set of people tom golisano says when i consider buying or investing in a business i have what i call mord flag checklist i thoroughly examine the financial statements the balance sheet the profit and loss statement and the cash flow statement all help me decide what I should focus on and the questions I should ask the owner. Big idea number four, understanding business finance will position you for great success. What do you do when you don't have enough capital to start your business? The best thing is not to start at all. Far too many startups are underfunded and this almost always affects the growth of the business. To avoid unnecessary struggles, don't start your business until you at least have the capital to fund its early stage. So the usual advice you hear is to use OPM, other people's money. This is okay if you have it all figured out, but as someone just starting out in the business world, you don't know it all. And you will make mistakes along the way, not to be negative, but what happens if you lose all or some of the money you got from other people? You will be under pressure for sure. This, that's why you should take Tom Golisano's advice seriously. If possible, invest only your money into the business when starting. You could seek investors and lenders later on when you want to expand. Every entrepreneur should make it a point to understand the business mathematics. The basics of it, at least, a good comprehension of financial statements will arm you to make good business decisions. However, if your business has attained some level of growth and you feel you need to pay attention to other aspects of your business, you could hire a trustworthy accountant to fill the role. Big idea number five, 
there are some basic questions to answer before starting your business. So what are these questions? The bottom line of the business lessons you've learned so far is that you shouldn't go into business without some fundamental knowledge. Here in this chapter, we shall progress further into basic things you should know before putting your product or service out there. So Tom says, I think it's really tough for anybody to go out and start a business in a world that he knows any, nothing about. So is the market ready for you? This is the first question. Entrepreneurs are generally optimists. And it's good in part because without optimism, you wouldn't even think of starting a business. But over optimism leads people to make unhealthy assumptions. For instance, it's common for everyone starting a business to believe the market is ready for them and that they will take over a certain percentage of the market as soon as they open their doors. Keep your hopes high, but back them up with quality research. So. There is a good insight here. Before starting a business, be sure you know exactly what the market needs and that your product or service is designed to meet that need. So when Tom first started Paychecks, his initial goal was to get 300 clients because that was the number he needed to live as decently as he wanted. But guess what? It took him four years to attract that number of clients. Today, Paychex services thousands of clients weekly, but that's because the company has built loyal customers over the decades. Don't expect anything good to happen overnight. Nothing ever works that way. So can you make a decent profit margin? This should go without saying since businesses exist to make a profit, but some entrepreneurs don't really factor it in when starting. Do the calculations and ensure every product or service you sell brings in profit. If you have to raise your price or reduce production cost, do it, but by all means ensure you're making profit and not running at a loss. Is your company built to meet your customers' needs? Your industry largely determines how you will instruct how you will structure your business. For instance, if you're into e-commerce, e then you will need to sort out your sales, marketing and product delivery. This might mean hiring salespeople, marketers, and delivery people who are or signing a contract with a courier services company. The point is to have foresight of these things your customers will need and structure your organization to meet those needs. So for your information, asking a colleague or friend to frequently check up on your productivity can help reduce procrastination. Big idea number six, every business needs to understand sales as well as buyer signals. A sale is the lifeblood of any business. If you don't make sales, your business will fizzle out. You could have the best product in the world, but if you lack adequate understanding of how to deal with prospects and closed sales, you will struggle in business. It's little wonder salespeople are one of the highest paid in the business world. If you're just beginning, chances are you will be your first salesperson, and that's good because you will experience objections firsthand and consequently be able to train your team to effectively sell your product or service. The fear of objections is the major thing that keeps salespeople from making massive sales. But quite interestingly, those who succeed in sales are people who have mastered how to navigate their way through objection. They see failure differently than other people. They see every rejection as an opportunity to improve on their sales presentation imbibing this attitude towards sales will radically increase your success rate some people are so occupied with their sales pitch they fail to notice buyer signals coming from their prospects hence they lose their opportunity to close when delivering your pitch pay attention to the verbal and nonverbal communications of your prospects 
So signals will show you people's level of interest and help you know when to strike the deal. You should also use trial closing in the course of your presentation. Use sentences like we could deliver your order the week after next with well that work for you or we could start the service immediately if you like to determine if your prospects are ready to close. Usually, if they have shown interest in the product and if you have fed them with enough information, they should reply to your trial closing positively. But in some cases, you may need to use trial closing twice or thrice, depending on the response you're getting. And in conclusion, most entrepreneurs start alone or with a partner at most. They do all the work themselves. Then the business begins to kick off and extra hands are needed. At this point, entrepreneurs usually have two options, hire contractors or full-time employees. It's more cost effective to go for freelancers and contractors. However, if you want to build a long lasting organization, hiring full-time passionate and committed employees is something you can't turn away from. It's important to be careful when hiring because you don't want to, you don't want someone to ruin what you've suffered to build. There are countless pieces of hiring advice out there in books, blogs, and educational videos that you could glean valuable lessons from. But note the following fundamental keys. Hire for attitude, train for skill, and fire when necessary. As much as possible, avoid hiring family members. Hire people who are passionate, full of energy, and ready to work in a team. Finally, never stop learning. The business world is constantly being influenced by politics, technology, and a host of other factors. But it's hard to be caught unaware if you make it a point to never stop learning, networking, and making proper adjustments. Okay, and at the end, we can try this. Use trial closing in your sales or presentations. You do this by making statements like we could deliver your order the week after the next. Will that work for you? Or we could start the service immediately if you like. This will help you determine the buying readiness of, for, of prospects. Also read more summaries on business finance. At the end of this summary, I would like to recommend you guys and I highly recommend to you guys these books. Brewing Up a Business by Sam Caligon, Launch by Jeff Walker, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur by Mike McLeod. Okay, so these three books and this book, Built Not Born, is very, very good books, guys, are very good books to entrepreneurs and leadership that you can benefit from if you want to start a business and want to be your own boss, okay, and don't work for anybody and have your own lifestyle and the life that you want. So we all hope so. Okay, guys, so that's it for today's video and today's summary. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much. See you next time.